Hello everyone, I'm sat with Jonathan Spooner, who's a friend of mine from Great Dunmo, who um, has quite a history in electromagnetic uh, radiation and knowledge thereof, having been in the Navy and now uh, a well-respected uh, post electromagnetic frequency practitioner. And um, I'd like to ask Jonathan a few questions about um, 5G and obviously what it means because there's so much contradictory and conflicting knowledge or, or information that gets bandied around. People swear blind it's just like Wi-Fi, it's not dangerous. Other people say it's, it's absolutely devastatingly um, uh, dangerous to human forms, human life and all life. So um, I'm going to hand over to Jonathan and um, ask him to explain to us a little bit about his background and also put some context into the whole issue of electromagnetic frequencies and radiation. So, hi Jonathan. Hi Jenny. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. First of all, let me say I have a dog sitting in my lap <laughs> and he's only 13 weeks old and hopefully he won't distract us too much but he's very inquisitive. So if you hear some strange noises, <laughs> it's my little dog getting interested in all the cables. Yeah. Right, well, to, let me, let's start at the beginning. So, in a brief um, walkthrough of my career. Um, back in the day, in the 70s, I was employed by one of the principal um, military contractors to the UK government. And my particular role was to work on submarine um, launch systems for Polaris and other systems that were out there, including the radio-based communication systems, which were... Um, in the 70s, um, pretty primitive to what they are today, but they were state-of-the-art in the day. Now, um, to put this in context for what we see happening in the world of communications today, mobile phones and this so-called 4 and 5G, I'd just like to take people through a, a little walk on what the frequencies actually mean and, and what this electromagnetic <laughs> radiation actually is all about and what it does to us. Mm. Um, I think that's so important because we're, you know, we're all at sea. And unless you're a specialist in this, it's very difficult to understand this. So far yeah. away. Communications has always been a hobby of mine. Um, I am actually a, a licensed radio amateur, and throughout my life, um, radio has been a big sort of um, hobby and a big part of it. Um, I've so I have experience in all frequencies from one hertz up to twenty-five. Um, gigahertz, which is the microwave frequencies we use by the, um, the large satellite tracking systems that you see around Goon Hilly and people places like that. Um, let's take first of all, before we go into 5G, let's just consider frequency and what that actually means because mm -hmm. I'm sure people listening to this interview, and I will try and keep it as least you know, nice and simple to understand, not too technical, but frequency is something which it's a bit of a misnomer for people because we use all mobile phones, we use telephones, uh, the old fashioned phones and cable phones. We have routers in the house now from Wi Fi and they all magically work. But how do they do that and what is, you know, what frequencies are they using? Let's just think about what the planet Earth, the planet we live on, does. It has, an, has a magnetic field which you see as the aurora. Magnetic field from the planet Earth, its average frequency is 7.83 which is the Schumann pulse frequency right it's not a static field it moves around and it, and it pulses um, and the magnetic field of the earth obviously has a north and south pole so it's very what we call VLF very low frequency it's down you know in the 7 hertz band now all the, the low frequencies up to 30 uh, as much as 50 hertz in some cases are looked upon as being therapeutic to the body. Up to 30 hertz we use on what is called pulse magnetic therapy. And these are the frequencies which are natural to our, our bodies. We live with planet Earth. We, 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 our bodies respond to low frequencies. And it's actually we need them for our life um, giving energy. Above 30 hertz you go into um, other bands which are what are called like the, the long wave band which goes up to um, 1500 meter band and you might remember that from the old days when we used to have radio 2 and radio 2 
works on 1500 meter band now you can convert meters into hertz if you if you have a calculation formula for it but these are the frequencies which are used um, commercially for radio they go from about 100 150 megahertz for um, cellular uh, mobile radio sort of systems um, which are used by the sort of um, taxis and places of that nature like CB radio yeah CB radio is about 25 megahertz um, walking through the frequency bands we can go from sort of the first bands you get to are about one megahertz one million hertz one million cycles per second and that is where we have start to have like the medium wave frequencies and, and, and things of that nature medium wave. well medium wave short wave all that band spectrum of band my dog is attacking my hand. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting bored. Mm. Um, yeah, so you want to really consider these frequencies in the right way because we'll come on to the high frequencies in a moment, but the short wave band, you know, we're looking from 1 megahertz up to, I suppose you can go up to sort of, um, well, 80 meter band is an amateur radio band, that's 3.65 megahertz. Um, that's the band which we use a lot to communicate on and VHF radio which is the commercial band they start at 88 megahertz million hertz per second that goes up to 108 megahertz then it goes into commercial um, sort of airline frequencies which the uh, aviation world use that goes to 136 megahertz and then after 136 you come into sort of like the lower amateur bands um, and they go up to 470 megahertz and that across those frequencies that's where communications is 470 megahertz up to 1000 million which is one gigahertz that's used um, for experimental um, devices drones um, which are used by the military video links television bands um, digital TV bands as we have now all those frequencies some are reserved but most of them are available to use um, so we're up to one gigahertz still quite low frequency, but considered very high in the 70s When you go above one gigahertz the, the difference between one gigahertz and two gigahertz is That the spectrum across there is reserved for again communications um, primarily for the, the UK military um, and other data carrying services and that's pretty, They've got pretty much a large band there that they can use this band spectrum I'm talking about is all listed on Google, by the way, you can look at it and, and you can see in more detail yourself. Just put UK wireless spectrum in, then it will tell you. Um, if we look and consider a prolific device that most people have in the house, which is a router for your Wi-Fi. Most people have got those now. They work on about 2.4 or so gigahertz. That's 2.4 thousand million cycles per second. Blimey. Right. It sounds horrendous when you describe it like that. That's yeah, go on. It, that's what it actually is. Um, now, funnily enough, microwave ovens, which we cook our food in, work between 2.4 and 3 gigahertz. But they have much higher power. You know, your routers in your house might well be down to millionths of a watt, whereas the microwaves have 800 watts, so many thousands of millions of times stronger. But they cook food by vibrating the atoms of your food together so quickly that heat's generated and it's the heat then cooks your food and that's how it works now, what I don't understand is that you can have the same frequency but a different power well first of all you must mix up frequency and power frequency is the rate of change which is as we know, you know 2.4 gigahertz is what we use on the, on the routers but power is something different power is the ability to heat Right, that's energy power. That's if, you, if you relate it to your kettle, your kettle uses two and a half kilowatts of power to heat water, whereas you might only have 500 watts um, used to run your television. So okay. it's all about power. Mm -hmm. So if you have a two and a half um, gig signal coming from your router and it's running very low power, which will probably be like 50 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts maybe maximum. The effect of the heating effect of that on the human body is very slow. Um, but if you had two and a half gig, 
gigs of power coming out of a microwave at 800 watts, then that heating effect is very much greater and that vibrates your molecules, your atoms inside your cells very, very quickly with a lot of energy and that creates a lot of heat. So it's got the same effect, but just a, a slower slow. rate. It's basically whether you cook the chicken in 20 minutes or you cook the chicken over a number of years, but you still cook the chicken. Right, okay. All right. So we were talking about sort of the gradations of different types of frequencies, and we got up to 2.4, which was the router and yes. the thing. And so we were going to move up to the next level. Yeah, next level. I'm oversimplifying these points because it obviously, if I was talking about the science of this stuff, it would go on for hours. But, you know, effectively, 2.4 is your router. 5G is basically a name that people put to a science, as, as 4G was. 5G encompasses lots of high frequency energies. Um, we go from really 2.4 gigs right up to 20, 30, 40, as high as 80 gigahertz. So what you're saying is 5G is like the marketing name? 5G like. is a marketing name. It's basically like a Philips or, or a Samsung television. 5G is a genre of, of ability to do things. 4G was the, the, you know, the previous greatest thing since sliced bread back mm. in 2008. A lot of people are saying that 4G and 5G are completely different technologies. Can you explain that? Yeah, the well, well, 5G technology, because it's, it's a, the new age technology, it's the latest thing which wasn't around a number of years ago, the technology, enabling technology for it is completely different. Um, it's designed to, to, to allow the internet of things, basically. So whereas in the past, 4G was for video and audio, 5G is for data, primarily for getting data and connecting everything you've got to it, and eventually people as well. Um, okay, <coughs> so that's that's a kind of like um, a commercial application for 5G yeah. um, with all of those different frequencies. Yeah. Um, what else could it be used for? Right, well, back in the eight, back in the 70s, high frequencies were identified as a way of um, controlling the endocrine systems of people. Because of high frequency, it's, it affects the human body in adverse ways most of it's detrimental um, because it's high frequency and high energy it can also destroy DNA as well um, fast or slow depending how near you are to the aerial systems um, and how long you're exposed to things so effectively certain frequencies were identified under a number of different reports and, and um, studies that were done to have different effects on the body some effects or frequencies were to make people very compliant uh, and go quiet and some was to make them get very aggressive and those frequencies were identified and shortly after these these um, reports were written those frequencies were recognized by not just the UK not just America but actually by the Russians as well so this is insider knowledge you're talking about now, a lot of this it? was in, a lot of this was under um, uh, classified information in the 70s which um, you had access to. I had access to. It's declassified now, but it was classified at the time. Um, and those frequencies were pretty much used across the globe for the best part of 40 years as, as ways of controlling you know, people. Um, probably you could look, the best example of that probably in recent times is in the 80s when we had the um, Tomahawk cruise missiles in the UK. There was a big upheaval by people not wanting them there. And if you remember back, there was a band of men and women um, arguing and sort of trying to... S they stuck out um, by camping out on the perimeters of the American base. Um, well, a number of years into that particular event, um, a lot of those people went very quiet and it all went quiet and they moved away and whatever. Well. The, way, the reason that those people got ill went quiet is because they, they were using the high frequency uh, arrays of aerial arrays to make them compliant and basically uh, not be a problem to the... Uh, Are you talking water. about the Green and Common women? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I did hear there was quite a high incident of cancer amongst them, and they yeah, were that's right, well, that's and they were being microwaved. But I didn't know they how were they were using the um, effectively people would see probably 
radar screens spinning around, but they had they didn't have radar screen. They used actually like um, dish type antenna, which were pointing at them. They wouldn't have known it because you can't actually feel that stuff. Um, but they were using that weapon to try and make them compliant. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone you know who was told these expose those things would probably not even believe it if they were told it but um that's that's what actually happened and we know it happened it's yeah. documented it's a yeah. classified unclassified yeah, but it's unclassified and you can look it up and there's big reports on the internet about it and that's what was used and that's just one instance but it's been used in countless times in, in different warfare zones and so that that's a kind of mind control that's a kind of manipulation of the human body and the mind is there any other application with well, 5G. I mean, how you look at 5G, it depends where you focus your attention because you've got so many different frequency bands and all of them are very high. I mean, you're talking of thousands or millions of um, resonance frequencies inside each band. So it just depends what you want to do with those frequencies. Some are there for communication, some are there to give you bandwidth, some are there to actually control things. Um, some are there can be could be there for weaponized you know systems it depends where you live what they're using how much power you're exposed to you know so it's it's a very it's not just a simple thing of saying all 5g is dangerous parts of it will be very useful parts of it are very dangerous um it depends but we've got no ins no insurance that they won't use the dangerous you wouldn't know unless you've got a full-blown spectrum analyzer capable of running up to 80 gigahertz and actually had, you could see what energies were coming out and then you know you'd be able to plot it but even then you wouldn't know what they're transmitting you'd only see the, you know, the signature of that power so it could potentially be the perfect silent weapon absolutely that's my personal feeling from what I've done and, and the work I was involved with and seen um, I would say yes many people probably won't believe that many people will say you're completely crazy but that is my personal um, belief well, it, it's, it's based on uh, your experience. We were always, to give you one example, we were always told as employees working on this type of technology back in the 70s, never ever go outside a test station if they're running 1.2 gigahertz, which is half the frequency of a mobile phone. Admittedly, it was at 500 watts, but we were told never to point ourselves in front of an area or always walk behind it because of radius powers going forward and that was that we were very much you know um, restricted from doing things when they were testing this stuff and that's mm. such low frequency compared to what they've got now so what so what do you think the whole 5g phenomenon where do you think it's come from and what are they weaponized against well who's the enemy five 5g in brackets is um a development from 4G to give us more bandwidth and high speed communications. That's what the, the technology is capable of doing on the techno you know, on a technology basis. Other parts of the technology can be used for weapons, other parts we can use for communications into deep space, um, the Internet of Things, which is what the, the latest thing that people are talking about is connecting up with bridge and everything else, I don't know why you want to do that, but that's what it's there for. Because this is great um, if you want to start monitoring everything. Uh, and, and the way it started um, covertly was really funny enough with um, things like Amazon and Tesco cards and Tesco points because you start grabbing data and data is king. And you've got data on what people are buying, when they bought it. You can tell exactly what, you know, whether they've got a new addition to the family. Um, Eventually, it'll be the fact you're eating bad food, so you can't get insurance because you've made yourself ill. Um, you know. So, so in other words, all of this data, this Internet of Things, yeah. and all this gathering of data, hmm. it's not for our benefit. So, I don't believe that. You know, they would argue that the more data they've got about you, the better people can be served by pre predictive al uh, algorithms that will tell you what you want to buy before you want to buy it. And that's half. That's the reason why. They, Things like Alexa and every time you use Alexa, it learns a bit more about you. Um, the level of covert monitoring and, and the level of data storage on people is now is massive, and, and the, the 5G technologies and takes it to another level um, in terms of what they can do, control. You know, they would know exactly where you're driving your car because eventually all the bridges on the M25 will 
have the fire key enabled so they will know the position of the car when you were in it what you were doing so they could charge you for that as well um, there's just a whole massive deep wide level what's the agenda what do you reckon what's going on well you've got to ask yourself first why does a government or any wealth control authority need all this access to all this information what is the i mean you could say it's to keep you safe safe but if you've got such rich data on everybody it's almost a gun to the head it's almost control and comply or otherwise we can you know we, we can make life hard for you you could look at it that way if you wanted to um the reasons as to why you know our, our sort of governments want to do that you could you could probably argue at the end of time but um yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's sort of dropped there. There's, the, the, there's also this idea of triangulation where the phased arrays can actually point specifically to targeted individuals. So they can target individuals specifically with uh, various frequencies. Uh, it's something I've heard, something I've researched. I have seen some research on that. But do you have a, a view on well, that? Well, you've got to kind of look at this logically. The technology, yes, is capable of probably doing that targeting people but the application of that technology how do you pick out one human being amongst millions and, and actually track him covertly with enough e and squirt enough energy into that person to actually kill them um, can you do it covertly from space mm, possibly but you still get up a target that's, that's recognized by a system so it's got to be have something on it it's got to have a receptor it's got to have uh, like a target zone on the body that is recognised by the weapon to say that's the person I want out of millions. So there's a massive technical issue there. Um, How could that be facilitated? Because I can think of a number of ways that they would be able to facilitate that. But I don't want to put words into your mouth. You tell me. Well, you know, there's there's ways which nano nanotechnology can be put in the body covertly. Whether that technology is capable of being used in that way, I don't know. Um, but it's probable that it could be. Um, but all these things, you've got to take the worst case view, the practical view, and you know, and try and rule out the, the sort of pure hype around it. Um, there's, it's known that we have got, and it's been it's been looked at under microscopes. There are nano chips in food. We know that. Why it's there, you could argue the case why it is there and why it isn't there. Um, but the, it, it has been recognised that there are nano particles in food. Do you think artificially put there? Well, however would advanced technology get into food? Oh, right. Okay, so a nano particular is something that's advanced. Yeah. Na nano, nano, nano chips are very, very small, uh, almost molecular size entities, which can be in your body and your immune system won't attack it because it doesn't actually register as being a threat. Um, and they are now being experimenting with that nanotechnology in the medical field for destroying tumours and other things. Um, and you would explode certain, um, use certain frequencies to explode these devices to kill up tumours and things. Um, so there's a, there's a whole load of, of biochem, chem, sort of electro science going on moment which is mm. probably going to arrive in a few years time okay so so let's let's try and close it then and, and just give me a kind of uh, an overview of everything you've mentioned that you've been discussing mm. where are we in terms of what's good and what's bad for us and what is your verdict of on 5g or 5g technology well the thing is jenny that 5G technology is prolific, it's, got, it's out there now, it's in most towns, it's being used. I think where we are is for people to become a little bit more of, sort of sensitive to the subject and more um, informed about it. Being informed is knowing at least a bit about the science and that it's not you know, these lollipop masks that you see at the end of your road. If you're feeling that you've got brain fog, you're not well, you've got fibromyalgia, you've got all strange sorts of health conditions that you never used to have that all of a sudden appear, then personally I would be looking for these high-powered lollipop 5G masks because any radiation, whether it be 5G or 4G, you know, 
diet or even your router in your house is not good for the body. And we have got so much electro smog floating around for, for emitters all over the place. You've got radio TV transmitters, you've got aircraft transmitters, radar, police transmitters, there, it, this stuff's everywhere. And adding another layer, layer of sandwiches on the top is just going to cause your body to become even more polluted with electro uh, interference. Mm. And that creates problems in the cells, in the mitochondria in the cells, which then causes the immune system to respond differently. And a lot of the aches and pains and the things that we're seeing in people is you could trace back probably to external forces and, and you know, it, right, mag, electromagnetic radiation is a major source of those problems. Wow, wow, okay. This subject's very deep very and very long and wide. And yeah, there's a lot about in it. In a few it? minutes you can't really cover it in a lot of depth, but mm. just, I would like people just to go around with their eyes open and just, think well you know how long has that area been there mm. all the street lights have now got receivers on mm. you know and every tenth light has got a transmitter on because mm. um, mm. we can do things isn't always an argument for doing it and the technology is getting to it's going to become more and more prolific and unless people st start questioning it and start asking the right people in the council no, I don't want that outside my house because it'll make me ill, prove that it won't. Mm. Um, by default, we've mm. accepted it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's scary, it's mind-blowing, really. Um, okay, um, thank you. And uh, <laughs> we'll put this out and we'll see what local people say. By all means, I mean, all I'm saying to people is just do your research, be more aware on the subject, research on the internet um, you know and just don't always believe everything that you're told about you know things make sure that you've got the proper facts because oh yeah you don't listen to the mainstream media mainstream media are controlled and they're paid lots of money and they can only report on them in the way which they're told legally they're allowed to so you cannot get the proper true scientific facts on mainstream media and even if they wanted to tell you they probably wouldn't be able to so You've got to do the science yourself, and all I'm giving is my life account of knowing the technology, using it, being involved in, you know, high-level military systems, where we saw the reports, we saw the effects of it, we were involved in actually building a lot of the kit, um, and I just know how bad it can be, mm. you know, um, mm. and that's that's what I wanted to really share with you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really grateful. Thanks, and it's it's nice to hear your expertise you know that so that you can actually you can say this calmly without any you know uh you know emotionality about it this is how it is it might be worth us doing a follow-up um you know tape on countermeasures that you can use simple cheap countermeasures in your home to try and make situations better for yourself let's do it nobody can actually stop this stuff happening because it's out there now as we speak but you can protect the hive that you live in. That's probably better than you know than the old. Yeah. Okay, that's great. We'll do that next. Thanks, okay. Jonathan. Cheers. <laughs>